Well, hi there. Um, it's Charlotte Bowen here from Birdhouse in Grimsby, which is a family arts organisation. And I'm here to have a conversation with Alexis Powell Howard, who is the owner of Bortis Therapy, um, who's been doing a lot of work um, already, but obviously most recently supporting people um, experiencing mental health challenges um, at the current time. So we're just going to have a conversation which will hopefully help um, families out there um, with some strategies and coping strategies. So hi there, Alexis. Um, did you want to just um, explain about Fortis Therapy? Yeah, yeah. Um, so hi, everybody. Uh, we provide uh, therapy for all ages. So we work um, privately with people. We work in a lot of schools and businesses and services, organisations, really, providing all sorts of support um, therapeutically in lots of different ways. Um, and we also do things to support people with their well-being, um, whether that's about strategies or um, about drop-ins, you know, all sorts of things, really, and training around mental health, emotional well-being. Um, and, you know, so the service has grown massively over the last eight years, really. And, and this last few weeks has just kind of, you know, uh, challenged us in lots of ways of how to move what we do, which ordinarily we would prefer to do face to face um, into a kind of online arena and uh, telephone based things as well. So yeah. thankfully that's gone well and people seem yeah. to be responding well to that. So, yeah, anything yeah. we can do to help really. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I mean, yeah, because I think obviously the mental health support is something that's much needed at the moment. Um, and we are going through quite a traumatic time, transformation. Um, I wondered what some of the common feelings are that, are, you know, you're, you're finding that are coming out from people. Um, you know, because for myself even, I feel quite up and down, a bit of emotional roller coaster. Um, and it's, yeah, the feelings aren't pleasant, I have to say. Um, and you have to find things to do to sort of um, occupy your mind. So, um, yeah, I just wondered as a therapist what, what you're experiencing through the clients that are coming through. Yeah, it's been interesting really over the weeks how the themes have kind of developed and altered as time's gone on. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. That roller coaster fits it perfectly, um, you know, and you're not in charge of the roller coaster. So you don't know when the dips are going to come. Um, when you're going to be on your side, when you're going to be upside down, it's all of those things. And I think that unpredictability is really difficult um, because ordinarily we've got a lot of distractions in our lives to not necessarily feel how we're really feeling. So uh, some of the things that we've seen have been real feelings of loss. Um, if, you, if you put that into, uh, you know, thinking about grieving, it's a similar kind of process. So, yeah. you know, feeling kind of um, lost and low and anxious um, yeah. and not necessarily in those places all the time, but yeah. definitely experiencing them and, um, you know, feeling kind of fearful. You know, there's that kind of survival bit going on as well, yeah. uh, because even though we might be kind of creating new routines and new things at home, there's still this backdrop, yeah, um, sure. which is feeding into all of that. Um, yeah. We've also had people feeling very fatigued, yeah. you know, very, very exhausted. Um, yeah. And I think that's because we're running on a lot of adrenaline uh, some yeah. of the time. Um, people who are working a lot, again, you know, it's different ways of working and that can be quite exhausting emotionally whilst yeah. managing how you feel about everything as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of a big range of emotions, really. There's also people who have really kind of accepted this is what's happening I can't control it um, and, and I'm enjoying having some space and some time to think and you know go back to things I haven't done for a while and things like that I have to yeah. say that obviously from my point of view working with mental health that that's less <laughs> um, yeah. that we're seeing but I know in the work I do in organizations there's almost a kind of polarized uh, yeah. response at times yeah there just seem to be sort of two camps and I think when when you're on the more anxious in the anxious camp you think well how can you be thinking oh this is great and I've got time to myself and but I think it's obviously just that personal response isn't it and what, well, what? yeah and then and what you're dealing with I mean if you if you're worried you know if our circumstances have such an impact on how we're feeling and if mm -hmm. you know we work with a lot of small business owners a lot you know I'm a small business owner you know there's stresses going on with that there's financial worries for people there's you know there's People kind of who maybe have been furloughed or have lost their job, who, you know, that purpose has changed. Yeah. And, um, 
and they they kind of are jealous of the people who are working the people who are yeah. working want to be furloughed you know it's there's lots of there's lots of conflicts going on really i think and yeah. you know yeah. it's kind of accepting where you are and what you've got but that yeah. can be really difficult to do yeah so what sort of strategies um, might you advise for sort of ma managing that sort of unsettled anxiety to start with it's just the fact that you can feel all over the place really um a, a good way of kind of tr tracking that really is to um is to scale how you're feeling okay so it's really subjective there is no you know this isn't going to fit into a graph this is very yeah. much about you um you know if, if 10's the best you've ever felt and one's the worst you've ever felt where are you um, right. okay so if for example um the other morning i got up and i knew i was low and it you know it's kind of oh you know feeling mm. kind of lethargic and yeah. uh, quite resistant to, to the things I had to do that day. Um, and I was about a six. Right. I thought, right, okay, so I know I'm a six. So what yeah. am I going to do to get myself to a seven? Because the thing is, no one else can actually help you to do that. They can support mm. you, yeah. but you have to do this for yourself. And sometimes yeah. when your energy levels are low, your motivation levels are low, that can feel really yeah. tough. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, you know, went for a walk. Uh, I moved some of my meetings that I'd got booked in because I knew I hadn't got the headspace that day. Yeah. Um, and just give yourself a bit of a break that this is how I am today. Yeah. Because that's part of this, part of the process. Yeah. And I think there is a general acceptance out there that we're all kind of going with the flow. So, you know, if you do move a meeting, no one's going to be saying, oh, no. You know, it's kind of, you know, if, even if you don't get back to people for a few days or, it's sort of in your own time I think there's that general acceptance even though you know a lot of people are working from home um the, the pace has slowed down I would say um hopefully for, for a lot of people anyway um because again I think it's a lot to to manage if you you know that sort of transition while working so I think there's that impact you know that we, we were expected to work from home potentially look after children um and uh and mentally manage what's happening at the same time. Yeah. So there's that sort of absorption of what's happening going on at the same time. And maybe that's where the fatigue comes from. And yeah, you know, definitely. And you're in different roles throughout the day. So I've got three children at home. My husband's yeah. working from home. I've got a dog yeah. who thinks it's all about him. So, yeah. you know, I'm constantly having to kind of flit in and out of, you know, work mode into parenting mode into yeah. you know doing the washing and you know all yeah. the stuff that we have to do and and that is it is tough because usually you would if you're working yeah. um if you go to work and you go into a different persona if you're yeah. if you are a stay-at-home mum or a stay-at-home dad then you take the children to school and you have some time to get some things done you, you have a routine and yeah. i think part of the the kind of feeling a bit lost is is about the routine and I'm not I'm not a massive you know kind of get a timetable done and you know do follow it through because I yeah. think sometimes you just can't do that but yeah. I do think it's roughly I mean I just did with my youngest daughter you know right okay so let's just kind of block out what you're going to do yeah. because she's finding it difficult she's bored she's yeah. frustrated yeah. you know all of those yeah. things so yeah. you're managing all of that as well as working and everything else and I think there is more yeah. flexibility there's more humanness around yeah um it doesn't always feel like that but there is yeah. <laughs> um yeah. and I think if you can if you can see things as a small step as opposed to a huge mountain that's going to really help so if you're scaling and you know where you're at you know you can do that with your family they can say where they're at as well um and look at things as a step rather than looking at the whole thing so you know if today we get another three weeks like this then don't look at the three weeks think about right what am I going to do tomorrow and mm -hmm. just step it out because the more you feed anxiety anxiety likes what if okay okay so at the minute we've got a lot of what ifs mm -hmm. um, and we ruminate on it and we think about it and we try and plan for the worst and everything else and you know for the majority of us the worst isn't going to happen yeah, um, yeah and the what if part of it you can plan for the worst but you spend an awful lot of energy and time thinking about that yeah well i think that's it as well it's the anxiety around the uncertainty and what's happening and then it's the fear basically and um you know maybe a sweeping statement but this could be the most fearful that somebody's ever felt in their lives and um, they might be have fears about themselves or a loved one 
and it's um you know it's actually sort of deepest darkest fears in a way so yeah. you know what are the what are the strategies for dealing with those feelings yeah well i, I think some of this is there's, there's lots of different ways of do, of managing these and it'll, some will work for some people and not for others and it's just finding what works for you so you know those worries about people that you love these are they are worries I mean, my, I, you know I've got parents and children and everything else and and but it's being trying to put some rational thought into there you know yeah. that you know if people are looking after themselves um if they're following the guidance if we are yeah. being sensible yeah. and we're actually well at the moment and we're home based and everything else the chances are massively yeah. that we're going to be well yeah and you know there might be people that you know of who've had it i know i know people who've had it and um and they've survived and you know you know back at home and doing really well so it's just trying to put some rational thought in there because when we go down that rabbit hole of what mm -hmm. if and fear yeah. and survival yeah. what yeah. happens is it triggers part of our brain which is called the amygdala right that is all about our survival so we have okay. we have four responses to that okay fight flight freeze and flop okay mm. and so a lot of that kind of a lot of us will respond in a fight or flight response yeah and actually day to day mm. our existence at home is okay yeah yeah do you see what i mean but our brain mm. creates something more than that yeah 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 because it's in the imagination really isn't it it yeah. is yeah. and there's and that's not to say there's things there aren't things to worry about i'm not saying yeah. that but yeah. it's it's trying to kind of put things into some rational balanced thinking and when we come out of that balance that's when we start to feel anxious and our mood drops yeah yeah so i uh, personally i felt um so much better when i'm occupied mm. <laughs> um so um you know i don't i don't have to be doing things but just to sit there is obviously kind of the worst thing for me that I could do. Mm. Um, so I've been occupying myself with, you know, small jobs around the house. I think, you know, that the first week of um, lockdown, everyone had the cleanest houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not happening in mine anymore. <laughs> no, I know. Goes that up. Um, but no, I think, um, as you said, it's sort of doing maybe the small, small things and yeah. rather than sort of having these big ambitions. Because um, I think, yeah, there's that, there's that um, place where you could put yourself, which is having too high expectations of what you're going to do with the time. And, you know, those celebrities tweeting about writing books or, you know, and, you know, for some people that'll, that'll work. Um, but I, I think it's maybe not having too high expectations of yourself at this time as well, isn't it? And yeah. kind of going with the flow within a loose structure, potentially. Yeah, I think there's a lot of I think people can feel quite a lot of pressure from social media about what people think you should be doing. There was a, there was a tweet yeah. the other day and it was about, you know, if you haven't, if you haven't, you know, learned a new skill or I don't know, done this or done that, then you, you know, yeah. basically you're underachieving. Yeah. I was like, you know, people are in survival mode. You, the last thing that some people can do is sit down and write or draw yeah. or do anything. So um, it's very much about distraction, distract your head, um, yeah. you know, do things that you feel good about. Um, yeah. if your journaling works whether that's writing or, or mind mapping or just lists mm -hmm. whatever um yeah. using music you know i love having a playlist on that really lifts my mood being yeah. creative being creative you know um anything yeah. you can do that's creative is going to help therapeutically yeah um, i think taking i think it's about um, managing expectations if your expectations of what you should be doing is here like you need to write a book or do a course yeah and actually you can't reach that you have set yeah. that up yeah do you see yeah. what I mean? So yeah. lower, lower that, lower that, and actually yeah. be pleased with what you have achieved, and, and give yourself a break. You know, just accept yeah. that this is what you can yeah. do today. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good thinking, and yeah, I guess back to being creative. Um, with us at Bird House, um, that's what we we concern ourselves with. You know, for children and families, it's sort of engaging them in arts and culture, and that was something that was lacking anyway in um in this area. Yeah. And um, so we've been looking at alternative ways that we can engage uh, children in that. And we've created um, a storytelling platform on um, YouTube. Um, but, and then we're currently thinking, you know, what do we do next? But I think it's um, how, can, how can parents support children to be creative um, in simple ways, um, uh, you know, that, that helps to sort of occupy them, get them to sort of get lost in a bit of a world, use their imagination, because um, I think um, 
as I've heard you say before about it being a, a bit of a coping mechanism as well mm -hmm. so what would you say that you know there's some simple techniques for children's creativity there's some really what we've been trying well what we have been doing and I'm happy to share it with anybody who wants it um, is we've been doing some kind of well-being activities on a weekly basis and just breaking it down into really simple things so like for example the book going on a bear hunt okay. you know if you can if you haven't got the book but, and you can watch it on YouTube and yeah. then you know draw bears and then yeah. hide them around the house or if you've got a garden in the garden and then go on a bear hunt and you know what yeah. I mean it's like that creativity mm -hmm. of just role play and yeah. a lot of the therapies we do with children are you know drama art play uh, yeah. based therapies and um because that's how they they work through things that's how they they um they don't necessarily have the language for what how they're yeah. feeling but they can yeah. express it in other ways yeah. so anything anything that's simple I mean we've we did one um last week that we sent out which was you know either find an old toothbrush or find a an old paintbrush and and paint with water on your you know on your path you know it doesn't yeah. have to cost a lot of money but yeah. but yeah. just kind of find ways of being able to be creative my two girls who are 11 and 13 um we bought some sticker books for you know geometric sticker books mm. Yeah, and yeah. they were both doing them the other afternoon and the atmosphere in the room was just like you know that feeling yeah. of yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they loved they loved it and you know they weren't yeah. expensive but they've been able to be proud of what they've achieved and yeah. so anything that you can do any any toys you've got get them playing yeah. with them if children don't yeah. like that kind of play yeah. then you know get them writing postcards to people or letters or you know the rainbows yeah. people have been doing using chalk yeah. on your path yeah anything like that that yeah. just they can spend hours yeah it's funny because I was thinking about letter writing and how it's kind of gone out the window with um technology emails um and um you know how therapeutic that is and it's a nice thing to do um and it's it's obviously lovely to receive the letter so um yeah I might be writing some of my own and getting my kids to write some yeah and get them to draw pictures on them and yeah. you know it's all yeah. it's all that kind of involvement isn't it yeah yeah and, and connection and um you know just sort of communication as well and at this time when it's sort of all changed um but no we'll be happy to share the the well-being activities on on birdhouse we'll, yeah, we'll do that, um for our for our audience and anyone else as you said um Okay, well, that's been um, a fantastic insight into how you're obviously advising people at the moment um, from a therapist um, perspective. Um, I just wondered if there's anything else we need to cover, but yeah, I think it was just about, you know, how, how people can remain sort of centred, really, because mm. with this sort of wobbling all over the place, for some people anyway. The other thing um, I was going to say, Charlotte, yeah, I didn't yeah. say was um, about breathing as well. Oh yes, yeah. Um, because yeah. when people are anxious, your breathing changes, as we know. And yeah. um, we've got some breathing exercises that we use with clients that we've kind of made into a kind of pictorial, you know, yeah. uh, images. But um, the main thing really is diaphragm breathing. So breathing right into the belly, which I'm sure when you right. do performances and things like that, it's about yeah. breathing. And yeah. Um, yeah. but families can, you know, if you're if you've got children and you could, they're anxious, if you if you all lay down and put a book on your belly and watch the book go yeah. up and down. Um, okay. So, so really, that on floor. yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. the the main aspect of it is that your breath out is longer than your breath in. Okay. Um, because that triggers your body to respond in the in the way that you need it to when you're anxious. So, okay. um, so just getting your breathing right and practicing it grounds yeah. you. Um, yeah. So when you're feeling heightened, it's something you can just do automatically, and you might feel a bit fuzzy headed but yeah, yeah. it's just getting enough oxygen in to calm your muscles down your brain down that yeah. that part of the brain I was talking about you know it just kind of brings you down so you can start to think more clearly because you can't think clearly when you're feeling anxious like that that's why you can't yeah. be logical yeah. so you know yeah. breathe and get that calmed down yeah oh one last question it was it was really about um being being on lockdown um in a family environment um you know because people are spending a lot of time with each other should we say um, and I think with technology, sort of, it, that can help because you can all sort of go into your own worlds for a while. Um, but it was kind of what advice would you give to maybe parents who aren't finding they're getting any space, you know, because they might have been at work or they might have been doing whatever previously. Um, and now they're, 
you know, constantly, shall we say, on demand and sort of um, shift into this, this other role, um, which they might not have been used to because with kids going to school five days a week. So what advice would you give to parents to find some time to themselves mentally and, you know, have a, have a break? <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's difficult when you've got younger children in the house. Yeah. Um, with, with older ones, I think you can say, I need an hour and I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know, don't yeah. come in. Don't yeah. come in. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, you know, using your, your time when you exercise, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. and and say, saying to people that that's what you need as well yeah. you know I was talking yeah. to somebody this week who's got you know a young child who's got lots of difficulties and older children in the house and we talked about you know asking the older children to cook tea one night just something yeah. simple um, yeah. you know doing a, a games night so that people can have fun and look forward to something yeah. um, but also the older siblings in the house being able to help with the younger ones you know there's yeah. creative ways of being able to create some space it's sometimes we just can't see them because we're yeah. in it yeah 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 um, and I know I mean we've we've put things in place at home because <clears throat> excuse me I, you know you need a bit of headspace and you need a bit of downtime where you're not a parent and you're not at work um, yeah. so just having a few, you know, half an hour after work where everybody just goes off and does their own thing. And yeah. if you've got younger children yeah. and, mm. you know, make it, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, you put on yeah. a Disney movie, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. it's fine. We're, yeah. it's yeah. just a necessity and it gives you a bit of headspace to go and do something you want to do or just chill out. Yeah. Um, yeah. don't be afraid of, of accepting that you need that. Yeah. No, good advice. And also think with the, the homeschooling as well that people might feel um, that they're letting the side down <laughs> if they're not kind of you know getting a lot done and that kind of thing um but I think there's advice out there you know is don't worry about it too much basically no, well, you, you can do different skills yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you know if I think about the baking that's going on in my house you know the which isn't helping my waistline but there's <laughs> baking going on and there's yeah. you know there's creativity going on and there's you know they're doing this they're doing some work they're not doing what they would have done at school but you know mm. you know, we're talking about things that are happening in politics we're looking at what they can do financially money wise you know all these things yeah. that yeah. that you maybe wouldn't get time to have conversations about yeah. we are having them and yeah. so I would say just with ev with all of it just take the pressure off yeah. you know there are the expectations from schools we work in about 45 schools we know that their expectations aren't that people are doing six hours of schooling a day and you know yeah. keeping the pressure on you're not their teacher and yeah. and you can't get the same responses as the teacher would so no, you know no. do what you can yeah and then and put in regular breaks and you know yeah. kind of just be yeah. realistic about what you can achieve with that really yeah yeah okay well thanks Alexis so what we'll do is um we'll share some of those activities on Birdhouse and I know you put out the top 20 tips um, yeah I'll send you that as well yeah yeah so we'll, we can start doing that and um I'm sure that the parents that we reach will appreciate those so yeah. thank you and no good problem. luck with what you're doing and we'll thank speak you. to you again yeah All thank right. you take care you. you too Bye.